Hello and welcome to Job One. We've got a great guest here that it's going to be very interesting to hear the input about. He is the executive director of the UCSD Career Center, a real gem on campus that I'm concerned a lot of the students don't know about and don't know all the services that are available there. So, Chris, nice to have you with us. Thanks. Tell us a little bit how you got here. Been here nine months, sure. so the world has changed since you've been it here. It has, it is. It's changing, as you know, it's flat, and it changes even more rapid than ever. Um, so I grew up in Connecticut, actually went to a school at UNC in North Carolina. Finished up there, um, spent some years in equity research in Washington, D.C., and had this moment of, I can be better. I, there's bigger impact, bigger legacy opportunities. And so joined the actual Career Center, actually at UNC, back in North Carolina after I got an MBA and said, okay, now it's time to move the needle and help students kind of materialize their purpose, their outcome, and what they want to do next. Did that for about seven years, and then had this great opportunity to come to San Diego to be the executive director of the Career Center here on campus, and have been, uh, like I said, now here nine months. It's tough to take, isn't it? It is. Being here in <laughs> it San is. Diego. Yeah. yeah well, tell us about the, the Career Center. Sure. I mean, as I said earlier, a lot of students aren't sure what it is, where it is. I mean, it's right in the middle of campus. It is. I mean, they walk by it yeah. 10 times a day, probably, right. and, and many of them. Um, don't know anything about. So right. let's say a student at UCSD is a freshman and they're not, they don't know about the Career Center. Sure. Tell us, yeah. tell us about it. So yeah, so it, it so strategically is right on library walk, so obviously students osmotically pass by it on a daily basis. And the biggest opportunity we find for students, especially if they're in year one, is it's never too early to start. And what I mean by that is resume, cover letter, LinkedIn profile, practicing an elevator pitch, practicing an interview, all of those type of skills which students sometimes say, ah, eh, I'll get to it another day, or, you know, there's really not a, sometimes a sense of urgency. It's way too early now, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. The, the, but the opportunity, though, because you can't kind of tackle it all at once, and more importantly, it's never final. You know, the world changes, as we just mentioned, and, you know, students' experiences change. The classroom dynamic creates more opportunities for them to apply knowledge and take that knowledge and then do something uh, next with it. And then also, too, their interests and their tastes change. You know, they talk to friends and family. UCSD has over 200,000 alumni. A lot of those alumni have actually been in the exact same shoes a lot of the first year students are facing, right? They, they get it. You know, most, 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 yeah, yeah, most, yeah, yeah. Probably and, all. Yeah, that's right. Yes, well, sometimes they transfer, so they, they, they may have come in no. as a third year, but, but more well, or less, they don't though. Count that's they right, transfer. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Um, so, yeah, so they've been there, and there's so much value that a student can kind of, you know, do. And, and the biggest thing, Phil, that, and the reason I'm there, it's not about the first X, the first outcome, grad school, maybe a gap year, that first job, you know, whatnot. It really is about life skills. And I think that's kind of one of the reasons I took the opportunity is creating a mindset. And it really is a mindset for the students to kind of do the right things, to do the tough work, like connecting with alumni, not because a job or an internship may come of it, but because it's going to make them a better person. You know, the alumni has so many sort of incremental skills and values, and of course, other people they know, but we really need to create that sort of that, that capability, that conversational ability, because as you know, UCSD is very much STEM focused, you know, and we definitely have a number of non-STEM, but it's, it's known for STEM. And big part of that is translation. We have to make sure we give the students the capable tools and insights, and we do a lot of coaching at the Career Center about how to translate all of that academic rigor into whatever they want to do next. So applying the, you know, the skills and, and things of that nature, you know, from the classroom to what's And Chris, next. it's all free, right? Let's it get is. that out on the table. Yeah, exactly. All the server, 100% of the services That's at right. the Greer Center are free. They are. So let's use our example as a freshman. Sure. You know, I'm wide-eyed, I'm in a whole new world. I'm yeah, there's kind of three ways for them to kind of engage. The first one is we have actually peers, fellow students we call our career peers, and they basically are no appointment necessary, like a drop-in advising type appointment every day from 10 to 3. So they can just walk on in, I'd like to talk to a career peer. Um, sure, there's usually one available because we have 15 of them. And they can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about something technical, a resume bullet point, looking at a couple different opportunities, you know, whatever. The second way is we actually have a myriad of people on the team that are specific coaches. So these are actually more technical coaches around kind of specific questions to career outcomes, like I'm looking to go to medical school or dental school. What's the best pass for that? Um, I'm thinking about another graduate level program. What are the options there? What, what yeah. percent of your students are going on to graduate school? Sure. 
close to graduation. Yeah. They may take a gap year, but right. how many are planning on a graduate degree? Yeah, is it we, a high percent? It is, it is. We look at the data and it's about 83% of our entire student population on campus has aspirations of going to a graduate level program okay, at some aspirations point. aspirations is a little different than reality. This is true. What's the reality? The reality is, if you look at the data, we tab, it's about close to about 40% of our students really? actually go to grad school. Mm -hmm. Is that exceptionally high for university or is that? You know, it's actually in, it, it's funny, it does oscillate a little bit with the macroeconomic conditions right now. Sure. So as you can appreciate here in San Diego, can't if you find look, a job. I might as well go to graduate school. That's get exactly my MBA, right. Might as well get my whatever. Exactly, exactly right. So you know, as the, is the world economy, and you know, for example, the Economic Development Council, it's like 3.2 percent unemployment here in San Diego. So pretty much, if you're looking for something, it's out there. So that sort of you know, drops the number of students going to grad school because they can find something. But um, Overall, though, it's higher than mo most universities, and the reason we correlate that is because of just the academic rigor and the fact that it's a UC school like the other UC schools. It's a very high level of, of brand and awareness, and our students come out very well-rounded to kind of you know, do what's next in grad school. Well, and especially with a STEM major, right. I mean, it's pretty much you need to keep going at it. That's right, right exactly. Yeah. And regrettably, you know, just like years ago, a BS or a BA was kind of the, the benchmark, mm -hmm you know, the tide has risen, right, you know, and, and now, and also st argues too that students are actually incrementally changing kind of what they're doing in graduate school. And so what I mean is they're not getting an undergraduate degree in a STEM or a non-STEM, um, or maybe they are, but they're pivoting and doing something different in grad school. So they have an English major in undergrad and they're going to medical school. You don't have to have to have the, you know, uh, the biology or the chemistry or the physics to, to correlate to med school. Um, and that's a huge thing we focus yeah. on because so many students at UC San Diego, you know, they think their major defines them. They define their major. We really, really strive on that to say, hey, what are the things that you've done, whether you're one and you're two, you're three, that kind of make you kind of capable and, you know, and it kind of thinks about what, you know, what you want to do with what you have in your skills. And we spend a lot of time, too, the last point is around skill development. And so not just kind of academic and, and things of that nature, but like, are you strategic? Are you really good with gray? You know, with you know, with data. Um, do you think about leadership and you know all the sort of sort of tactical skills that kind of go with you everywhere, not just a certain career path. Well, business sense. Yeah, right? exactly right. Are you? Are you? Exactly right. Is your goal to make a lot of money and yeah. change the world? Or? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And then the third way they engage through us is asynchronously, which is basically the video content. We do a lot of webinars. Um, you know, obviously the website we just actually relaunched, and we so also I can do it from my dorm room. You could or my apartment. exactly right, exactly right. Yeah. And then one of the major kind of platforms we just opened up uh, is called Handshake, and it basically is a platform. Five hundred other schools are on it, and it's basically a massive opportunity board for jobs, internships, uh, project level components, uh, campus opportunities opportunities, off-campus opportunities, so there's hundreds of opportunities that students can take advantage of. And the program is called Handshake? Yeah, that's the name of the program, yeah. So let's get back to our freshmen. What, sure. What, certainly not first semester, but probably second semester, what yeah. should they, yeah. in an ideal, if you were sitting right. with a room of freshmen here, by, sep, by second semester, come yeah. to me for Yeah, what? that's right. I would say the biggest thing is, you know, start thinking about what a summer experience could look like for you, because the opportunities and kind of the windows for you know, deadlines for applications really are in the fall, late fall quarter, moving in to the winter quarter. So um, students really should be start thinking, of course, they should have the resume by then. That's kind of a no-brainer. They should have a kind of a very basic LinkedIn profile because, again, people will be searching them. It, it's inevitable, right? Social media channels should be set up with some privacy settings engaged because you would never want something from a Facebook, a Snapchat, or an Instagram sort of, you know. Defining you. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. So those are the things they should have now. As they think about what their summer could look like for them, geography. Do they want to stay in San Diego? They can be there from Orange County, from Seattle, from Boston. You know, what is geography? And let's start thinking about, hey, what are the spaces in the certain metro regions where they can kind of be engaged? Is there certain big companies because they really want to have a large brand name, you know, opportunity on their resume? Are they thinking, well, actually, I'm not really sure what I want. Maybe a startup would make more sense because I can be really impactful and I can really move the needle in a, in a smaller mm -hmm. company versus a large one, right? We also think about just experiential learning. Is there, they want to take some summer class. No problem with that. But maybe they can bolt on some independent research, right? So we try to think about, I always say it's all about some optionality and about parallel paths because one path never defines anybody. So we really encourage the students 
think about a few different sort of options, a few different paths, and you kind of work them in parallel. Because For your summer between your freshman and sophomore right. exactly. year, that's soon. Mm -hmm. Yep, we really okay. want them to start thinking because, you know, we're going to be the world's not fair, you know, and certain certain things will dead end and they won't work. And if you yep. put all that eggs in one basket, you know, colloquially, um, you know, it could brown. So we think about, you know, certainly one could be a very structured internship, you know, a typical a June to a September type of experience. But we are now seeing students, because we're in the gig economy, doing two or three internships in the summer, right? They're doing these little one month here, maybe yeah, taking some- I don't want a two month one, I want that's exactly three right. two week ones. Right, exactly, yeah. and at the end of the day, right, and I tell the students all the time, end of the day, it's about two or three bullet points on your resume, that's it. That's it, two or three bullet points. So whatever those two or three bullet points, what do you think you'd like them to say? Back into that from an internship perspective or an experiential learning opportunity to kind of get to that, that outcome. And I tell students, Yeah. When you're interviewing with me for a job, I'm going to ask what you did in the summer. Right. And if you brag about, oh, I played golf and got my handicap down three points, and I tell them, you know, the applicant before you and the one after you uh, had internships or right. went to Guatemala and built a school. Mm -hmm. they, they helped a nonprofit. They volunteered at this that made them a more well-rounded. I wouldn't be brag that I wouldn't brag that I got my golf score down. Because <laughs> right, it yeah. doesn't tell me as the employer you're very initiative. Right, right, right. And the other you're thing too, which is ambitious. interesting, Phil, is right. You, you think about if they can sort of do something productive. However, they would define that over the summer, right? It begins a trajectory, which really what we think about on my team is about how do we maximize trajectory? Because underemployment is significant and it's out there. And we definitely want our opportunity to try and yep. marginalize and minimize it. So we think about, okay, what is the trajectory that can get a student can get started on? Sometimes the pushback, though, from a student is they kind of let their past, they let where they came from define them more than they should, you know, and for us it's not about the past, it's not where you're from, it's where you're going, you know. We really push on the students, the resume is great, but it's all in the rearview mirror, it's all behind you, so don't let it define you, right? Think about what's ahead of you, what are the things from the resume that will translate to where you want to go, and moving it to year one, and taking it to year two and three, yeah. you know. And, and they're old enough now yeah. that the expectation from employers or admission for grad school That's right. or say, hey Chris, take control of your own life, right. right? Well, my parents moved a lot or they did that. Okay, well that was high school, right? Yeah. You're now big yeah. boy, you're yeah. all grown right. up. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You control what you yeah. do. And the big thing we try to encourage, and from my background in you know, entrepreneurship and innovation, is failure is fuel. And what a better place to fail than in an academic setting, you know, where yeah. you, can, you can pick yourself up, you can learn from it, you and can And you be really better. do fail forward, Yeah, right? Exactly. It's what you learn yep. from it. That's right. And so, you know, as soon as so we, we think about the world is competitive, so we have to get students on, the, on the, the trajectories early. That's why year one is important. But as they incrementally increase their knowledge base, they move from their first year to their second year to the third year, we try to obviously say, okay, what are the things that could kind of be bigger? You know, larger scale, you could learn a bigger project, you could do something else. Um, faculty are a massive resource for students. Yes. You know, obviously all the research they're doing in their labs, and so many students don't have a close relationship with a lot of faculty, but they really need them from a recommendation perspective for graduate school. And so they really need to start also thinking about that kind of early on, you know, in their first well, or second and year. Faculty to me has a responsibility to students to say, now we're gonna take this, you're here for biology 101. Yeah. If you enjoy this course, either here are career paths for you to consider. Right, yep. Because you can earn a living under this umbrella of biology. That's right. Now you're gonna to have to take this and this, and you might have to go to graduate school or if you want to go to medical school. But here's the career paths in this class. Because I did yeah. why am I taking this? Yeah. You know, I like it, but I don't know what to do with it. Well, it's up to the faculty to explain those career right. paths and to say, go to the career center, learn yeah. more about this, or right. meet with me after class someday. That's right. So they've been in industry, a number of them have. They kind of have translated that. They're, you know, they're doing work, obviously, with um, Fortune 50, Fortune 100 companies, you know, through engagement in their lab and their research. Um, and the other thing, too, which we always try to think about is, you know, the students are coming in, they're 18, 19, 20. They're transitioning to adulthood. They've been being a student for 20 years, and that's a big shift. And there's a lot of emotional maturity, there's a lot of contextual maturity, you know. A lot of distractions. Exactly. This is the first yeah. time I've lived away from home. Yep. I'm in an apartment or dorm yeah. with 30,000 other playmates around. Yeah, that's right. And how do I handle that? Yeah, exactly. So it's we a big really, test. We, we think about, right, it's definitely the, you know, the, the pie chart, right? You know, career and, you know, and outcomes is just one, one piece of it. There's the social, there's the, you know, the familial, there's financial, there's the academic, and it's all part of it. So all of our advisors are very obviously skilled in thinking about 
let's talk about how other things are in your life because we know career will get marginalized, compressed if the other pieces aren't in a relatively good place. So we definitely spend a lot of time thinking about that. Um, the last thing we do is we do a lot of work with kind of alumni and employers that come to campus in a myriad of ways. You know, we have the typical career fairs. We also do course company nights and you know, industry nights where they'll come. Are they'll these all in the career center? The majority are on campus, exactly. And we try okay. to do them, you know, kind of in the off hours, over a lunchtime or in the evening. So students would not be in class, you know, exactly. So. And how would I hear about that? Yeah. How, if I'm a student, how would I know? All of these opportunities. Yeah, exactly. All of these opportunities are on Handshake. So we everything and basically the the platform is built for students and employers. And so employers set up their profiles of like all the things about, you know, roles and opportunities, et cetera. Students also create their profiles. The employer and the student can actually email back and forth on the platform. They don't have to use the uh, kind of campus emails channels. Um, they find about all that there. As well as at least some of our campus opportunities, there's another platform called the Real Portal, which is run through basically the teaching and learning commons. And that's all kind of research lab opportunities with faculty on campus. So it's kind of those two. It's, it's Handshake and it's the Real Portal. So if a student was to ask me, where should I spend five or six minutes every day? Those are the two places I would tell them. Both of them? Yep. Exactly. So there's not one for STEM and one for all right. others. Yeah, or, and, or and you know the thing is too, we really want you know sometimes we have some fairs or you know our, our events, right? And the students say, oh, it's a tech company that's coming, and I'm majoring in, in you know theatrical arts. Why would I go to that? Well, I will argue if you look at the data, like if you look at the alumni and where they're working, there are hundreds, thousands of political science alumni, arts, and drama, you know, arts and humanities, social sciences alumni, and technology. And then vice versa. You know, students that majored in computer engineering, you know, structural engineering, are working in non for profits and foundations and things like that. So students really need to kind of look very broadly and don't say, oh well, if it's this, I'm gonna make some general, very vague assumptions that are likely probably. Who would accurate. hire an English me? I love English, I love writing, I love journalism. Who would hire me in an I you know? I was Microsoft. talking to an exact student about that yeah. and they're like, Well, I you know, I I don't um, I really want to move to Seattle, but I didn't I don't have a tech degree. I said, Well, well, what you know, it was a political science. I said, let's take a look. So literally we got on LinkedIn. There's a great platform, um, kind of the third resource after Handshake and the Real Portal is utilizing LinkedIn. Going on LinkedIn.com forward slash alumni, it defaults to the school that you're in. You can search by keyword. 170,000 alumni that have LinkedIn profiles. So we actually went in, said, you majoring in political science, you want to be in Seattle. It pulls up a few thousand alumni. Let's see where they are. And it gives you employers of alumni of where they're working. This yeah. one alumni that I pointed out was at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Totally, you know, didn't, wasn't at Microsoft, which is yeah. you know, what you expect. Which falls under the net networking. And That's right. we know that 70 to 80% of jobs are found these days through networking. Yeah. People who know people who know. So yeah. use that, use that yeah. alumni. Let, let, let's rewind one yeah. thing, because there are students who have to work. That's and true. they have to pay tuition. Fair enough. And so they don't have the freedom of, uh, during their summers, mm -hmm. of picking internships that are paid or unpaid. Most are paid lately, which is a great mm -hmm. thing. That's true. But I tell them, find a job in the summer mm -hmm. that is some way related to what you think you might want to do yeah. or at least it helps you develop the skills in the field yeah. you want to you want to go to agree so if you've got three summer jobs to pick from which ones help move your needle mm -hmm. toward your career path yeah. and knowing the reality is I'm boxed in a little bit because I have to earn fifteen thousand right. yeah. dollars we try so to that's a reality try, exactly we try to say you know whatever the experiential summer you know opportunity is what is the, what is the the pull away like what's this what's the skill like working at a um, you know at a pool maybe you're a lifeguard for the summer teamwork you know accountability you know um, you know solving problems all translatable skills interpersonal skills dealing with parents exactly. and kids and so yeah we, but, we, and you need to play that up exactly. those are skills they it's are. customer service exactly and I tell you that's the number one skill that I think eight, that companies yeah. are looking for is can you work well with people? Right, exactly. Right? You know, so many important things we really try to think about is cultural fit. And students not defining a company by the brand that they're reading or hearing about. It's like having some conversations with people who actually work there to say, hey, like, tell me about what the people are like at this opportunity. Are they extroverted? Are they introverted? Are they you know, ambitious? Are they team collegial? You know? that, corporate, that culture, yeah. that corporate culture. Because is so then, if it's really quickly, you'll, it'll happen. Two things will happen. One, it will intrigue you even more, and you're like, oh my goodness, that's where I want to go. Or it'll be, that's not what I thought, and that doesn't, yeah. doesn't sound right, and I don't want to do that. So, it's yeah. like when students walk on a campus. My wife was the yeah. career counselor at the Bishop School here in San Diego. Sure, yeah. And, and, and it happened with our sons. They walk on campus. 
this doesn't feel right for yep. me. It's not yep. the, the major is X or not have it. It just doesn't feel. And then they walk in one and go, this is it. Yep. I want to go here. Yeah. Go. The sometimes, one last thing I'd say on that is okay. sometimes, too, students get kind of just what they know, and they think that's the only option. So they think, and I'm kind of generalizing, but any company that begins with letter A would be amazing for me. You know, and I will argue, I will push back and say so many cool companies that you may or may have not been familiar with that are kind of in the early stages of development, more of a startup or a middle-sized company, could be game-changing. And you would learn so much more. And sure, you know, you could eventually want to, you know, get to an Amazon or an Apple or an Alphabet. I get it. But sometimes the world's not fair and you won't land there for the first time. You know, it won't be like this. Instead, it'll be like this, like this, like this, yep. like this, like this. Lattice, I call it. And exactly. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, and so that's an important thing to think about, too. Yeah. So we're now freshman, sophomore. We've talked about internships. Yep. Every summer that you can afford it, right? I mean, it's yep. the best practice. And don't think about just summer. Mm -hmm. If you can get one during the school year. Yeah. And if it's only two weeks, amazing what you can learn in two weeks about an industry to go, ooh. I want to spend more time in this arena or right. screaming, oh my God, I thought I wanted to work in a huge 30,000 yeah. person company. I was lost, didn't know a soul. Mm -hmm. I'm much more entrepreneurial That's right. to do that way. So now we're getting serious because we're now in our junior sure. and senior year. And now how do we use the Career Center effectively? Sure. sure. So the hope is that they've engaged with us before they walk in the door, but, but we know it's right place, right time. So sometimes we'll have students that come in and it'll be April of their senior year and they had never set foot in the career center because life was busy and whatnot. You missed that one, huh? That's okay, I know. <laughs> we try not to, but we... How could you yeah. avoid me for all this but, time? But one thing we, were we try to do also too as, as students are kind of moving into kind of third and fourth year is we really are now also going out onto campus to where they are. So we're going to our cultural centers on campus and having events there. We're going to our residence communities where students obviously would be, you know, be living. We're going into classrooms where students are obviously because of academic reasons, right? Um, so we're doing more things outside of the career center to hopefully engage them and sort of say, hey, it's maybe not what you think it is, myth versus reality, or there's actually things you can take advantage of. But third year and fourth year, the things I would recommend to students at that point, Certainly, they got to have the technicals down. Like, you have to do some resume, you know, development, making sure you're good there. You really have to practice some interview practice. I mean, you really can't go in cold. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm good at talking to people. I'll be fine in an interview. Yeah. And you mentioned that 30-second elevator speech, which is so hard to do. Yeah. But yep. you need to practice that, and yep. you need to have two or three of them, depending on which yeah. career path. Right. Right? You're not going to blame, yeah. I'm going this way. No. Yeah. Right. The world exactly. is your oyster. Yeah. Try. And sometimes so we you even need have, more than one. Sometimes a couple different resumes, too. Maybe there's a creative resume. Oh, Maybe lots more of a business of resumes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I tell people every job, every internship you're interested in has a different resume. Yep. The other sort of piece is, you know, third and fourth year is there is going to be an expectation on the students now that they are more comfortable in who they are and kind of know more where they're going, you know, and they will be able to add more value to wherever they go. And so, for example, reaching out to an alumni or connecting with a recruiter that's coming to campus, there's going to be a higher bar to kind of be reached in the sense of, you know, you're bringing something more than a couple years of school. What else do you have, right? So they really need to think about what are the things that they've picked up through their summers, maybe in their research over the course, um, you know, during, their, during their school year, um, things like that. So being able to kind of clarify what those things are, some really tangible deliverables. I'd also that they really kind of also need to think about LinkedIn and they really need to kind of start building connections with people because if you go on again this is again the world is flat so people are going to be searching but going on and seeing a student's profile with you know, less than 100 connections you kind of wonder what's you know yeah. so, something's askew here you know you really want that student even if it's with their classmates or faculty to sort of start building and getting more comfortable with loose connections the beauty of all LinkedIn right it's completely customizable so there's no, it's great for company research, it's great for kind of connections, it's all those things, and people can learn a lot about themselves, yeah. spend a little and time on the platform. We can do a whole program on LinkedIn, because it's sure. also the only place you can put all your, comp it's like putting, I, if you're looking for someone yeah. like me, here's all my data, yeah. without my boss knowing I'm looking for my job, because my boss is, right. my boss is on here too. Yeah. Chris, this has been very interesting. Career Center Phil, is open five days a week. It is, five days a week from eight to 4.30 every day. Events are off campus, uh, they are out of the Career Center. Yeah, and all on the Handshake so. platform. So that's kind of the, the big takeaways. The Handshake platform. Handshake and the other one Real was? Portal. Real Portal. Yep. Super. Chris, thank you for joining Phil, us. This pleasure. has Thanks been again. very helpful. Appreciate your time. Thank you. You bet. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you at our next segment.